So welcome everybody to the um, online meeting um, to talk about SCIS and Skrtl and Assignment 1. I'm going to record it and um, make a YouTube video of it um, immediately because as those of you who are in um, 401 as well as 503 will know that I'm having computer troubles and I'm far from convinced that they've been fixed. So I'm just having plan B for the meeting. So here we go. So I don't need to go through that because this is not that version of it. Um, welcome everybody, this is Casey and me. Casey Garrison, Lee Fitzgerald, we're your subject coordinators for this subject. So that's just to give a face to the people that you're um, talking to. Okay, so I wanted to start off with, <coughs> excuse, me, excuse me, just alerting you to some issues in resourcing the curriculum. Um, currently happening in schools and we'll just look at the clips on the next three side slides. So they're from a SCIS Connections article in 2013 written by Kennedy as you see the um, details down below. Um, so this is the first one, it's the range of resources collected in school libraries. So just have a little look at that. So this is 2013 and it's possible that it's changed since then, you know, because there's such a digital thrust forward, um, as you all know. But what I found interesting about this uh, graph uh, was that it was to see that in all kinds of libraries, whether primary, secondary, or combined primary and secondary, um, books, at least in 2013, were still the main resources collected and gradually diminishing, as you see on the slide through DVDs, magazines, websites, audio books, subscription databases, and so on. Just an interesting range of um, collectible items which may be interesting to you in your schools. And these are the uh, major issues for, of resourcing for school libraries. So just have a look at those. And as you see, the major problems are uh, under use of resources by both teachers and students. And I must say I found that to be the case um, in my last school, particularly teachers under using school resources, not so much with students. Then the third major issue is um, inadequate budgets, you know, about which we all know. And it's interesting to see that um, e-resources not being managed or used effectively is right up there as well. And these are the access issues for school libraries, you know, of facilitating access to the resources. The top one is the library management system, you know, the OASIS, the Oliver, the AMLIB, the um, Destiny, not being fully integrated with other systems. I guess we're talking about ClickView, Wheelers, Overdrive, etc. Though I do think that SCIS has, is, you know, working on Wheelers and Overdrive. To, so that um, it can be integrated with your library management system. So it's just interesting to look at. And this one is from Softlink Australia. Softlink Australia has been conducting annual surveys of school libraries in Australia for several years now. And as no doubt you know, um, Softlink is the source of all of that going through um, DET schools in New South Wales. So these surveys produce most interesting data, such as the above. So this particular graph shows the average budget for Australian schools in each category, in each uh, set of numbers. So it may be interesting for you in your schools. Um, it's quite clear that the combined primary and secondary have a greater budget, but that just stands to reason. So you see there um, a natural growth. In the schools with greater numbers, they um, have more money allocated to the budget. But for me, looking at those and coming from the school that I was last teacher librarian in, um, that, that, those budgets, even the top level budgets, are pretty low. And this one is also from Softlink Survey 2014. And it's a really useful one, I think because it shows that very interesting link between school library budgets and the NAPLAN results in year three, year five and seven and nine. Um, this may be also useful to you 
um, in persuading principals to increase the library budget, you know, because resourcing a curriculum requires a healthy budget. So the 2015 SoftLink School Library Survey uh, results are not officially out yet, but this is a preliminary look at trends, and I think it's also interesting for you in your libraries where you're trying to resource the curriculum. Okay, so what's trending in school libraries? Number one trend is technology, and this is unsurprising. Responses related to the use of technology in school libraries and how technology has changed library services. In addition, school library staff commented they would like additional training, ongoing access to new technologies, and the ability to integrate more technology into their service delivery. Other related topics, as you see, included future planning, the development of new technology guidelines across schools, and staffing to assist with the implementation of new technologies. So I suggest that you have a, a read um, later when you return to this um, slideshow of the comments made by various teacher librarians there. It's interesting that technology is the main trend, not surprising either. And that the second uh, highest trend at the um, softening survey isolated is a, a emphasis on the library space. Respondents continue to be excited about the evolution of the library space and its use as a school community hub. School library staff are looking to create more flexible and engaging learning spaces for students, staff and class groups. Wi-Fi access, relaxed student zones are making libraries more of a social meeting place as well. So come back and have a look, have a read of the, um, the comments later. I'll also post this as a PowerPoint in resources. Okay. Um, another trend in school libraries, digital resources. And it's interesting, personal digital device usage in schools is on the rise. 54% in 2015, up from 34% in 2014. That's very interesting, you know, quite, quite an uptake. In 2015, 35% of of SoftLink School Library Survey respondent schools indicated that they purchased ebooks, and 57% indicated that they will definitely or most probably purchase ebooks within the next 12 months. So, school library staff are excited about the range of digital resources available and being able to grow their digital collections. So, they're conscious of the balance between print resources and a need to better understand the range of digital resources available. But people, library staff are eager to expand the reach of their library beyond its physical walls, which I'm sure you're finding is the case as well. So these are the exciting trends that SoftLink has isolated. Interesting to look at that. So we've got online databases, obviously we've got ebooks, iPads, and really interesting, you know, kind of cutting edge ones are the maker spaces that I hear you've been so excited about. Um, robotics, social media, flexible digital learning, digital literacy, all of these things, you know, great opportunities for the teacher librarian and things to bear in mind when you're resourcing your curriculum. And this is um, an infographic from um, SoftLink showing some really interesting trends. I hope you can read it. It's a little bit difficult to um, um, make images out of the infographic because of its extraordinary shape. Okay, so basically in 2015, 73% of schools allowed digital devices to be used in the classroom. That's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, very high statistic. 41% of respondents thought it was important to have a digital device strategy. And then the prediction for the most astounding number of digital devices internet, internet connected in every household by the year 2020, you know, not far off, 28.7 devices per household. Sounds astounding to me. But then I guess if you think, you know, in your own family, if everyone's got an iPhone and iPad, you know, and a computer connected to the internet, it would add up pretty quickly. And it's of note to see that 52% of schools say how important it is 
to have technology that will facilitate bring your own device. Um, an interesting article there linked to that slide is the news story that um, one of the students pointed out to me about Sydney Grammar School bucking the trend to bring your own device and actually um, pulling away altogether from computers in the classroom. Very interesting. And it's a very highly achieving school as well. So now we're going to have a look at Education Services Australia and to look at SKIS and Scootle, um, membership of which you've all been invited to, to take on. And you may be you know, somewhat bewildered as to why we have SKIS and Scootle in this subject. Okay, so SKIS and Scootle all come from, both not all, both come from Education Services Australia. Okay, and some of you may still be wondering, how do I access SKIS and Scootle? What are SKIS and Scootle? So I'm just going to tell you. But to um, get the, the documents in um, Interact, which will teach you, show you how to connect to SKIS and to Scootle, you go into resources for the subject in Interact and you click on SKIS and Scootle resources and you'll find the documents and the links that you need to navigate, navigate to SKIS and Scootle which both of which, you know, the intention is for you to use these very often in your schools and they will be of direct benefit for this coming assessment. Okay, so just telling you about SKIS catalogue, um, which is to be used as a selection aid in this coming assi assignment. So it's a valuable starting point for school staff looking to identify books digital resources and websites to support the curriculum. Um, while the main um, object of SKIS is to provide catalogue records, SKIS also recognises the value of enhancing the catalogue record wherever possible with any information that may help school st staff discover and review resources of interest. And I think, you know, it's particularly the links to reviews um, in, in SKIS that's going to help you with this first task. Subscribers are encouraged to use the SKIS catalogue as a selection aid to locate resources that are required for a particular purpose in the school. I had a, an inquiry from a student saying, what are the 50 records? Has that got anything to do with the first assignment? And I just wanted to reiterate that no, it doesn't. Yeah, um, as Charles Sturt students, you're provided with access to 50 catalogue records from SKIS, and that's just really for your own curiosity to learn about SKIS and how you might use it for cataloguing when you're in school and not wasting time on manual cataloguing. So what is SKIS? It's a catalogue, um, a database of 1.6 million records for education resources and it's also very useful as a resource selection tool. So there are two ways to start, start searching the SKIS catalogue from SKIS web. You can, uh, for a keyword, anywhere search, type the keyword into the search uh, there at the search SKIS OPAC box in the right hand panel. For all other searches you will need to click on the OPAC link on the second level navigation bar at the, bar at the top of the page. So it's just about SKIS and helping you to get ready to find the resources for your particular curriculum topic, as well as using SKIS in your teacher librarian job. Okay, so there are four search options in the SKIS catalogue, basic, advanced, subject and author, and basic search is the default option. So basic search has eight search options, with the default um, being keyword search anywhere. The search matches on exact strings and does not have truncation. A general search term will return a very large number of results. So you enter words relating to your topic or title and you omit the punctuation. So the search results screen for basic and advanced search provide a link to matching titles. Here we go, stuff, whoosh, bedtime stories, super pop, buster. Um, and a cover image if it's available and an icon indicating the format of the resource. 
Ustavim se u eto, zdravlje, da je pok, pok, a sam rekordim, pok. It's not just bearing this in mind when you're making your curriculum list, which has to have a variety of sources. Okay. Note the right-hand side filter options for refining your results quickly. For example, by recent publications, by ele electronic sound and video recordings. Okay. And there's an option in this GIST catalogue results page to send an email of the results to yourself or to relevant staff. We recommend that you always email to yourself initially, then forward the email to other staff from your own personal email address. Okay. Um, since July 2011, SKIS has added an interesting enhanced content uh, service to the SKIS OPAC from Synthetic Solutions and Library Thing for libraries via subscription of Thorpe Barker. So the bibliographic records in the SKIS OPAC are enhanced to display additional details about resources, information such as plot summaries, author notes, awards and reviews, um, which is particularly interesting for your coming task. This content is sourced from third-party services and delivered to SKIS by a link data-based on ISBN. Note the reviews in Synthetics content come from authoritative commercial reviewing services. This is pretty good. Um, and then Library Thing has reviews sourced from the Library Thing customer base around the world. So this adds value to um, searching skills for um, resources, uh, you know, in your job and also for the task that's coming up. Um, this GIS catalogue, bibliographic record, display, provides a link to Google Books. So you can see sometimes the entire book, not very often, is viewable. A portion of the book is viewable and about this book information is available. So these links from SKIS will enrich search results with lists of relevant books, journal articles, web page citations and links to related works and full text when available to help you with the whole, you know, finding uh, resources that's coming up very soon for you, 18th of April. <clears throat> so the other um, Education Services Australia service that we've recommended for you is Scootal. Okay. So this is Scootal. And I'm just sort of reading notes here. So you can search for resources, you can find resources matched by the Australian curriculum, you can find what's new and popular in Scootal, and so that's the home page of it. You can search for content. How do you find the good stuff in Scootal? So there's a search box at, um, at the top of every page. With it you can search the full repository of, of digital curriculum resources. So it search, the search fields include the title, the description, the topic, the keyword, and the catalogue entry ID fields. So you can search with a single keyword, multiple keywords separated by spaces. You can use Boolean operators, or, and, and not. And currently, uh, there's no exact phrase search inside double quotation marks. Scrutal is limited to displaying 500 search results. Note that you should log out as your student identity and close the browser um, when you're working at school and you want to log on as a teacher. So you need to get out of your child student identity when you want to log on through your school. This is the login to Scootal through the various state um, access points. So you choose the state that you're in and log in that way. The resource types available on Scootal are these. Interactive um, multimedia resources, audio files, um, movies, still images, and interactive multimedia assessment resources, units of work. So that's, you know, the various on Scootal. And the content of Scootal comes from all of these places which are very authoritative. 
comes from cultural institutions and other public organisations to schools across Australia and New Zealand. So they come from science organisations, museums, libraries, private collections and archives. And probably the most relevant way for you for this coming assessment task and also in your school libraries, one of the best ways to search Sootal Sootal? Sootal is by Find by Australia Curriculum and the search bar is there. Okay, so that could be very useful for you in this coming task. Now tomorrow if I get the chance to do the online meeting, which I'm fairly doubtful about because my computer problem is not yet fixed, um, we will have the chance to um, talk in it. You will have the chance to talk using the chat box. Um, no. Okay, so now I'm moving on to what you're probably most concerned about um, for this coming assessment task. We're going to talk about that now. Okay, so here's the overview of the task. You'll find the task in the subject outline down the bottom left hand side of the interact menu bar. I'm sure you know that in the subject outline. So you can see its value there, 40%, due on the 18th of April. The return date is the 10th of May 2016, obviously, um, because we always have a three-week turnaround period for marking. Um, there are a large number of students in this cohort, um, over 100. So in order to give you the kind of feedback that you like to get that's useful for you, we do like to give you a lot of feedback and it will take that length of time and we don't send any of them back until we've done them read. We'll try to get it done by then or earlier. Okay, so that's the overview. Oh, it's not very clear. Okay, so that's just a shot of the learning outcomes for the subject. That's the list of them all there. And the ones that are particularly relevant for this task are the first one, be aware of the role of school library collections in learning and teaching, be able to assess information needs in the context of building school library collections and services, and number four, be able to identify and evaluate information sources and products to determine their relevance to the information needs of the school community. So those three are particularly relevant to this task. The task offers you an opportunity to demonstrate your understanding of collection building, needs assessment and selection and acquisition. And it allows you to apply the knowledge from modules one to four in a practical way. And also with the reflection part of it, reflect on the importance of effectively resourcing a specific curriculum um, area. Okay, so I've got a shot there, a clip of a detail from the marking criteria showing exactly what's required from a student doing part A and B of the task at a level of high distinction. Just to show you that this is, you know, the top um, band of achievement, what a student would do. There's a well-balanced mixture of types of resources, print, electronic, etc., which meet the resourcing needs of the curriculum topic as applied to the specific context of the school. And that's really important, the specific context of the school and your specific students. The annotated resource list is correctly formatted, comprehensive, descriptive, critical, evaluative and concise. Selection criteria are applied and critically analysed. Selection aids are analytically used to locate sources chosen against well-chosen selection criteria. Um, bibliographic details of entries in the reference list are correctly supplied. So our marking criteria are very detailed um, for the reason that you should be able to see at a glance what a task looks like at every given level, high distinction, distinction, credit, pass and um, fail. And so you can then really then work out how yours stacks up when it's returned to you and when it's marked you'll be able to understand why you got the mark that you did. Okay, so just going through the task, part A, assessment of curriculum resource needs, five focus words. 
you know, asked to identify a unit of work from a school curriculum. It might be from the Australian curriculum or the state versions of the Australian curriculum, but it doesn't have to be. Obviously, those people are not in Australia, it won't be. Um, what's shown on this slide is a clip from the Australian curriculum, um, Foundation to Year 10 menu, where you would find a host of examples of places to look for a topic on which to base your annotated resource list. You know, you can go to English, Math, Science, the Arts, uh, History, wherever. And um, people have been asking me what a unit of work is. So I thought I'd give you a definition because I know there's all different levels of students in this subject. You know, some people are not in schools, some people are not in school libraries. Um, most people will know what a unit of work is, but for those who don't, what it is, is a curriculum topic which might last for a month or six weeks, which teachers create to teach the topic. Often this unit of work will include an inquiry task. So if you had an inquiry task or an assignment in mind when you're creating your annotated reference list, this would help you to be very focused in your list. So you need to provide a clear overview of the chosen aspect of the curriculum and explain the nature of the resources needed. The nature of the resources. The reference to the nature of the resources means a statement about the kinds of material that you'll need for this topic. So you refer here to your selection criteria, which might include such, such things as the kind of content needed, the accessibility of the text, the mixture of print and electronic resources needed, any particular local constraints imposed by your school, for example, um, ESL considerations, access to resources, the budget, etc. The idea is to have a clear, considered context for parts B and C of the assignment. So then moving on to part B, which is really the meat of it, it's 2,000 words. Um, okay. So you need to identify the selection criteria and selection needs you've used to choose your resources. Um, you maybe number the list, so you can use some shorthand in the annotated resource list. So go to module two. Mod oh, no, I can't speak. Go to module two to find out the difference and you reiterate it in your mind. The difference between selection aids and selection criteria. Select selection criteria are what you expect a resource to be if you are to choose it. The standards really. So broad selection criteria refer to the purpose and content of the resource. General selection criteria apply to all resources regardless of content or format and there's such things as authority, scope, treatment, arrangement and format. And then specific selection criteria relate to particular formats such as information books, fictions, DVD, periodicals, websites, ebooks. They provide specific guidance for selection which relates to that particular format. Okay, selection aids, as distinct from selection criteria, selection aids and tools are the same thing. They are, for example, promotions from suppliers, recommendations from colleagues, um, bibliographic services such as Skiss and Scootle and their um, recommendations, reviews, for example, Goodreads and Inside a Dog. So, and then the next thing you do, having sorted out all that, is create your annotated resource list with 10 entries, each entry being 200 words long. So each annotation consists of an evaluation against the selection criteria you've chosen and an assessment of the usefulness of the selection aids that you use to locate that particular source. The selection aids, you know, whether it's SCIS or Scooter or whether it's um, <clears throat> recommendations from colleagues or whether it's Google, the selection aid that you use, you have to assess the usefulness of the selection aid you use to locate that particular source. Not a general statement at the end, but within each annotation. And then the last part, 
between. So far, I haven't had a great deal of time to promote in this subject. Your Think Space blog, this is where um, you'll do your reflection. Priorities and issues, 500 words. You conclude with, uh, with a general statement that summarises what you've learned about priorities and selection issues to be considered in ensuring a school library collection su successfully supports learners and teachers. And you post that to your ThinkSpace blog. Okay. So I hope that helps with assessment task one. Um, I've put an example there. Uh, that, you know, it's just about um, what you might choose for your particular curriculum topic. Um, I've chosen there a unit of work from the Australia curriculum. It's a year seven depth study, the Mediterranean world, Egypt. So the students are, it's actually in, a, in an assignment, my scenario, and the students are working to answer an inquiry question. Why was New Kingdom Egypt a most glorious period in ancient history? So that's what they're working to, to find out. Um, they will need a mixture of print and online resources at the right level. They will need overview resources to begin with, more detailed resources later in their inquiry. And this is an example of one of the resources chosen and it's bibliographic detail. So it's uh, for an introduction to the unit on ancient Egypt and it's the British Museum website um, chosen because it's likely that students need an overview source to begin with at the start of an um, assignment such as the one above. Okay. So that's an example of a resource chosen. And then the annotation will contain, it will describe the resource really briefly. It will show how it meets broad, general and specific selection criteria. And one of the general selection criteria might be currency, accuracy, authority. It talks about how it meets the broad selection criteria for example, needs arising from the school context, how it meets the general selection criteria, currency, accuracy, authority. I think I've repeated myself there, sorry. I've mentioned the general section, selection criteria quite twice. Um, you have to say how it meets broad selection criteria, general selection criteria, and specific selection criteria, and that's what they are. So the last one, specific selection criteria are those arising from the needs of the specific format of the text, you know, in the case that I showed you, the, the website. Um, and finally, um, just make sure that your reference list has a mixture of types of resources. So this would be, you know, um, the, the, the types that you see here in this wordle would probably be for a um, high school topic. And you might have that range of um, types of resources, websites, books, articles, magazines, non-fiction, fiction, as you see there. And if you're resourcing a primary unit, you'd still need a range, but obviously you wouldn't be using, um, probably wouldn't be using databases and articles. The uh, range would be smaller. And finally, when it's time to submit your um, article, the um, 18th of April, you are to submit it through EAST and you'll be taken through a process like what you see in the slide here. You probably know that already. Um, just to say that if you are struggling and need um, an extension for this task, it's quite easy for me to be able to give you an extension of a week because, um, you know, I just can for the first task. It's not so easy for the second one because we just physically run out of time in the, um, in the year to be able to give you extensions on the second one. But I can still do it, but it's, you have to go through a process then. I'm looking to um, get a grant pending and um, so... But if you need some extension for the first one, just let me know. Okay, so that's it basically, folks. 
Um, I may, I may still run the online meeting. I'm just not enormously confident of my technology, given the fact that it's not been fixed since I did my 401 meeting. So I've taken the precaution of recording this first, and I'll turn it into a YouTube video in case it doesn't work tomorrow. So best of luck with your second task, and um, I wish you well. Thank you.